This morning, we're cruising into the Pacific Ocean off the California coast. Wait, Peter, do you see that? You oh, see yeah. That? Look at the size of that pod. Up ahead is one of our country's most unique national parks, the Channel Island Archipelago. I'm so excited. I've never been here before. It's so nice to see how rich of marine life it is out here in the channel. We've seen sea lions, we've seen pelicans feeding, there are dolphins going by, and the whale population, they even see that a little more frequently. Awesome. This is the only place, Peter, on Earth that you can find the island fox. And each of the islands has a little different subspecies. So what we're going to see is unique just to Santa Cruz Island. I'm so looking forward I'm to it. I'm so pumped. The island fox is one of history's greatest conservation success stories, and it's full of twists and turns. We've got a lot of ground to cover. Almost there. Oh my gosh, Peter. Look at Look this at view. This. As far as you see, you're looking at nature, no power poles, oh. no pavement, no structures. This is the way California vegetation looked 200 years ago. I thought there was people here and activity and, you know, ranching and farming and that kind of thing, but it looks like totally uninhabited. It has. And listen, do you hear anything at all? No. How often do you get to hear no sound at all? You're right. Today, the big attraction of this pristine wilderness is camping. We'll start from here, okay. and then we'll push it back, OK? All right. Peter, Peter, come here. There's a fox. It's right here in the oh, campsite. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Yeah. The foxes have no fear of people or predators because they evolved on these islands in rare isolation. Island foxes are the smallest canine in North America. They're related to mainland gray foxes, but they're different in a number of key ways. The island fox is one third smaller than its mainland ancestor. People always think they're pups, that they're seeing pups, but they're actually full adults. The island fox was originally brought here by the Chumash people, who thrive sustainably on these islands for thousands of years. So the Chumash are the native people of this area. They were a seafaring people, and the foxes were very, very important in their cultural history. The Chumash native people considered the island fox to be a wise and sacred animal. Archaeologists uncovered foxes that were very intentionally buried with Chumash individuals. We began studying island foxes because they're such a unique species. It feels like you're in on a big secret when you're studying them. They're one of the tiniest apex predators. I mean, you think of an apex predator, right? You're thinking about a great white shark, you're thinking about a grizzly bear, you're thinking about a Nile crocodile. You're not thinking about something that's smaller than a house cat. Thankfully, today, after intense conservation, these curious foxes are a common sight at the campgrounds. But just a few decades ago, they were nearly wiped out. To learn more, I met up with retired National Park Service wildlife biologist Tim Coonan. He was one of the very first to sound the alarm that the island fox was in danger. Things were very different on the islands 30 or so years ago. Yeah, how were they different? This island, as many others, had been grazed heavily by sheep. Pigs had been brought to the islands by the early ranchers in the 1850s and let go as a food source, and they were running rampant all over the island. The ecosystem was not in balance at that point. For example, besides the feral pigs and the sheep, DDT decimated and eventually eliminated bald eagle nesting on the Channel Islands. There used to be about 25 or 30 bald eagle nests every really? year on all the Channel Islands. Really? But by 1960, they were gone. DDT caused eggshell thinning, and those eggs were not viable. They could not hatch out. And that created an opportunity for golden eagles to come in and nest on the islands, which they had never done. Bald eagles primarily feed on fish and the goldens that arrive and feed on mammals. Right. The island fox was in big trouble. That's right. Bald eagles and foxes coexisted for thousands of years. 
whereas golden eagles specialize in small mammal prey and foxes were exactly in that prey size range. It was a case of an extraordinarily smart, stealth predator that these foxes had never seen before. And death came from the sky. The foxes did not know to look up. They had not evolved with anything like this. These are journals from the 1990s when I was on the island. The catastrophic decline of the foxes could lead to their extinction. That's a pretty powerful statement. It was dire straits. These guys had one foot in the grave. They were fully in danger of going extinct. 